Good afternoon. This is the House, the afternoon meeting of the House Appropriations Committee on March 18th. We are delighted to welcome members of the um, House Health Care Committee to uh, give us a walkthrough of their bill uh, H4, I wrote it down wrong, H430. You're going to correct me when H430. Um, which I'm calling the Dr. D bill in my head, and you will tell us about that. Um, so, um, and Representative, so we are, are joined here by Reps Houghton and Representative Black, um, as well as Ms. Car Carby, Carby, gosh, Jen, I know you, I know your name, Carby, uh, Ms. Carby from Ledge Council, and Rep. Black, you have not been in our committee before. And so uh, I would like us to really quickly just introduce ourselves to you. Um, I, I, I'm sure you have met some of us, but just I let- have been, I have been in your committee Never think, mind. three times been... before. <laughs> Observing. Never mind, we're not going to introduce ourselves to you. So thank you for joining us. And with that, we will turn this over to you uh, you. for your presentation. Thank you. So thanks for having me today. I'm bringing before you H430, which is an expansion of eligibility for Dr. Dinosaur to all income eligible children and pregnant individuals residing in Vermont, regardless of their immigration status. A small number of children and pregnant women in our state do not get necessary care because they do not have health insurance and they do not have the money to pay for their medical costs out of pocket. Children struggle to obtain necessary vaccines and primary care and pregnant women receive no prenatal care and give birth in fear because they know that they will never be able to afford the cost of that care. While we do have clinics around the state that offer free care, most of these do not provide care for children and none provide obstetrical care. They are also not available in all regions of our state. While all hospitals in Vermont offer patient assistance programs, many do not extend this benef benefit to individuals with an undocumented immigration status. These factors lead to care being sought in emergency rooms that cannot turn patients away and individuals are left with enormous bills that they could never even begin to repay. Also, I think it's really important to note that this uncompensated care further increases the tap cost shift in our healthcare system and it's ultimately paid by commercial rate payers. So under our current rules, there are many non-citizen residents who can enroll in Dr. Dinosaur or other qualified health insurance plans. Some of these non-resident categories include those that have been granted asylum, refugees, trafficking victims, and other humanitarian categories. But it's really important to note that, there, that though the application and approval process can take quite some time, and while awaiting the approval, they are not eligible for Dr. Dinosaur. And due to the complexity of these many statuses, we do have people who are denied coverage when they actually are eligible, but a mistake has been made on their enrollments. By simply extending coverage to all, regardless of the status, this simplifies the process and will lead to less denial errors. So how many people do we think this affects? Um, due to the very nature that they're undocumented, I only have estimates. These estimates are coming from UVM Extension Bridges to Health and the Vermont Immigrant Assistance Program at the Vermont Law School. Within our farm worker community, they have estimated that there are approximately 25 to 30 children who are accompanied by their parents who work on our farms. And then they also um, estimate an additional 20 unaccompanied youth under 18, and they are actually working in our dairy industry. Um, the Immigrant Assistance Program estimates that at most 50 children who are in those previously mentioned categories that I had um, that will eventually become eligible, but are not yet, they estimate that there's 50 children. 
uh, DIVA has extra extrapolated out national data and they estimate that there are approximately 22 pregnancies per year in the state. I think it's really important to highlight that once a child has been born, that child becomes a citizen and therefore they automatically qualify for coverage. And since we know that prenatal and childhood access to care is an undisputed building block for a lifetime of better health, if we extend prenatal care and we could avoid just one premature birth, the cost of that premature child's care may possibly exceed the entire cost of this proposal. Many non-citizens in Vermont identify as people of color. And as we continue to address racial equity in healthcare on a statewide level, adopting these changes is a significant and straightforward step that we can take to decrease racial disparities in care. This pro proposal would provide a tremendous health benefit to a relatively small portion of our population. And most importantly, the Committee on Healthcare thinks that this is simply the just and equitable thing to do. And because of that, the vote on this bill in our committee was 10-01. I have a long list of supporters, which I could rattle off if you want, or I could maybe toss this over to um, Jen Carby and she could do a walkthrough of the bill. But let's go or to- Or do you have any questions? Um, I'm not seeing any questions. Let's go to the bill. Thank you. Nice overview. Thank you. Thank you for the numbers. Good afternoon, Jennifer Kirby, Legislative Council. Do you want me to put the language up uh, on the screen or do you wanna look at it yourselves? Members so, should have a copy of it. And I think I'm not seeing anybody say they want it up on the screen. So we're good this way, thank you. Okay, great. And should we start with the bill as introduced? Is that what you're looking to? Why didn't you hit that? quickly and then 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 we'll move to the um, change. Okay, great. So the bill as introduced really implements the um, the policy change that Representative Black went over. So it would enact a new section in Title 33 in our um, chapter dealing with Medicaid and other coverage for Dr. Dinosaur coverage for undocumented immigrants and specifically it would direct the Agency of Human Services to provide coverage under Dr. Dinosaur to children and pregnant individuals who are undocumented immigrants, but who would otherwise be eligible for medical assistance from the state under uh, the applicable provision of the Social Security Act that allows us to operate the Dr. Dinosaur program. Section two of the bill as introduced would uh, appropriate $1.4 million in one-time funds to the Agency of Human Services in FY22 to begin implementation of the Dr. Dinosaur expansion, including language appropriate outreach to the affected and healthcare provider communities. Section three would direct the Agency of Human Services to include the full costs of expanding Dr. Dinosaur eligibility to undocumented immigrants uh, the undocumented um, children and pregnant individuals in the agency's FY23 budget proposal. And then we have the effective dates with the FY22 appropriation taking effect on July 1st of this year, the remainder taking effect on passage with the Agency of Human Services making that expanded Dr. D coverage available not later than July 1st, 2022. So that is the bill as introduced. Uh, and then with the potential amendments um, that this committee may offer, it would strike out sections two, three, and four. So it would keep that initial section that, that would expand or direct the Agency of Human Services to expand Dr. Dinosaur coverage to include um, pregnant individuals and children who are undocumented immigrants but then the appropriation would still be in section two would still be 1.4 million in one-time funds to the Agency of Human Services in FY22, but it would be for three, uh, go toward three different purposes. Um, first would be grants or reimbursements or both to healthcare providers for delivering healthcare services during that year to children and pregnant individuals who are undocumented immigrants. 
So grants or reimbursements, kind of prospective or retrospective payments to providers for delivering care to that population. Second is grants to Vermont organizations that work with members of our undocumented immigrant community or members of the provider community to provide outreach and information around opportunities for children and pregnant individuals in Vermont for undocumented immigrants to access healthcare services at low or no cost in FY22 and thereafter. So kind of getting through this bridge year and into the Dr. Dinosaur expansion after that. And uh, also the funds would be used, uh, would go toward implementing the technological and operational processes necessary for DIVA to administer the Dr. Dinosaur expansion beginning on July 1st, 2022. Section three, uh, this is around the information about what the estimated costs would be. This would have the Agency of Human Services provide information on the estimated FY23 costs of the Dr. Dinosaur eligibility expansion um, beginning on July 1st, 2022. So provide information on estimated costs of that as part of their FY23 budget presentation to this committee, the healthcare committee and the Senate counterpart committees. And then we have the effective dates. Uh, again, section two with the FY22 appropriation would take effect on July 1st of this year. The remainder would take effect on passage uh, and would require the Agency of Human Services to make coverage available to undocumented immigrants under Dr. Dinosaur as set out in section one, um, beginning on July 1st, it should say 2022, it says 2021 at the moment, uh, 2022 subject to FY23 appropriations for this purpose. Just make that correction there. Uh, any questions for the presenters? Jim, uh, Representative Harrison. Yeah, thank you. Um, maybe this is, uh, I don't know if this is a question for Representative Black or uh, Ms. Carvey, but um, is it envisioned here that once you're qualified, you would get some kind of uh, insurance card, um, as I would assume, most um, people probably have today um, from Dr. Dinosaur if they're on that program or from their uh, private insurance carrier? Or is it further, you, or is it in just envision you, you get free care? No, you would receive a um, Green Mountain Care card um, okay. with your yeah with your unique ID number on it, and you would have Dr. Dinosaur coverage uh, as every other child with Dr. Dinosaur in the state has. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. So are there other questions for members of the healthcare committee or, um, our Ledge Council, uh, Dave. Thank you, Madam Chair. So Jen, in uh, layperson speak here, what, what we've done really with the amendment is we've given, uh, the amendment says, give AHS the $1.4 million to do outreach and grants to serve this population. And then, it moves on and it directs uh, DIVA and the agency to do a state plan amendment and bring back for consideration in FY23 any kind of uh, budget proposal. Is that it in essence? Have I missed anything? I think for the most part, except the state plan amendment piece. I don't think because this would be state only dollars, I don't believe there would be a state plan amendment oh. necessary. Um, but otherwise, yes, it, it effectively creates kind of a, a bridge year um, in trying to provide more access to coverage and more information about access to coverage, uh, access to, to services and coverage for those services during FY22, and then would provide you with the information for FY22 and, um, and potentially beyond, but specifically the costs that would be in place in 20, FY23 if you were to go ahead with the actual expansion. And in the first year, it's one-time money. 
in this first year for the right for this FY22, um, yeah, FY. the grants and, and reimbursements would be one time money. Okay, thank you. So I kind of went down the same, or I thought I understood what I thought Dave was saying. So it does not become in, in the out years, this cost does not kind of get subsumed into the diva morass. Instead there, we will see a separate freestanding line item for the, the, this cost. Is that how that will be managed? How will we see this if we choose to accept the budget in out years? I mean, I expect it would be part of DIVA's base funding. The difference would be that there would be no expectation of federal match on this piece. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, and so the testimony was that there are, um, sounds like uh, is that there are about a hundred children uh, who we believe would be eligible for this and um, annually maybe 22 pregnancies uh, that would be eligible for this. And the thought is that these individuals receive emergency care now, um, you know, if you show up in a uh, in an, an emergency department, you receive care. They don't say, are you, let, show me your health card or prove that you have insurance. We have a wonderful system that takes care of people. And the, the thought is that this costs associated with actually providing insurance um, are less than those associated with poten the potential costs of emergency care um, so the, the, there's a speculation, but that's the thought behind that. And um, as well as kind of the obvious ongoing benefit of providing good health care coverage to children um, so that they develop and are healthy and become good citizens in the state. That's kind of the effort behind this to, to accomplish the, the, the reason we're considering this. Okay. Absol absolutely. That, you know, I mean, just access to a pediatrician when your child is sick saves thousands of dollars instead of bringing them to an emergency room. Great. Thank you. Committee, so um, when, when we received 430, uh, it, it felt like it needed a bit more work just in terms of getting the money out the door to the um, groups that needed this. I was thinking of the, uh, the effort that we put behind the stimulus equity grant checks that we provided last year um, that I think this committee and the body was proud to say, yep, we're taking care of this group of people. And we realized that you needed to do some additional sort of outreach work to make sure that folks in, um, in this community who are not normally connected to government services, you need to figure out how to do some outreach there. And that's the genesis of some of this um, uh, of, of this amendment that has been suggested. And I'm assuming, Dave, you would um, be suggesting that we amend, that the House Appropriations Committee amend H430 with what um, Ms. Kirby just walked us through. That would be my recommendation. And I, I also wanted to take special pains to point out uh, to our chair that uh, in section two, it's very specific in that it does not list the name of the organization whom the money will go to. Huh? I, uh, I'm teachable. Oh, you're so good. Then, <laughs> sorry to the other member. That's a little uh, inside thing, I guess. Yeah. Anyways, I, forgive me, a little humor there. Very little humor. Uh, yes, that's my recommendation. Thank you. Representative Iacoboni is once again trying to score points in the committee. No. And he has <laughs> I, I try hard. Yeah. Okay. Um, any 
any further questions. Um, this is pretty simple and straightforward. And if the committee is ready, is this something that we can act on and not have to come back and refresh ourselves with? Um, yeah, I think people are ready to go. Um, so, um, Representative Iacoboni, will you propose, will you make a motion, please? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I would, I would move that we um, approve H430 as amended with the committee's recommendation, uh, substitute amendment for sections two and three. So would perhaps your first motion be that you, that you move to amend mm -hmm. age 430 um, as provided in, I don't have a draft number on this, but in the draft that is a, a before us? Yes, Maida, does that work for you? Um, would it work if I said move to amend age 430 as provided by Rep Iacovoni's language or something like that, since we don't have a number on this language, but to identify the language somehow? I need to draft it as an actual amendment for you. Um, okay, so maybe we will can wait do. until we have, let's wait till we have that draft rather than fumbling okay, around. Okay, I mean, it's gonna be a cut and paste, but it's, yeah. uh, this is yeah. it was just for discussion. Great, thank you. Why don't we, so we will set this aside um, we'll yep. wait till we have the, um, the, the amendment mm -hmm. and we will return to it. And so, all, all the credit for this work goes to the uh, healthcare committee, certainly not me. I want to thank them. Thank you, committee members. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Representative Black, for your presentation and uh, both Reps Black and Houghton and others in healthcare for your uh, work helping us to amend this proposal. So um, I think we should let you go. We're gonna probably move on to some other work. When we get the amendment, we will do our work here and Dave will let you know what we're doing. And we're trying to figure out how, when we're moving things. Um, I don't have, you on a list yet. So we'll let you know what's happening. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank okay. you. Thank you all. Thank you.